Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing the pharma graphs. Okay, and this topic is given in first aid 2015 on page number 254 and 255 and in first aid 2016 on page number 247 and 248. Now, before starting the graphs, first we will see the factors affecting systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. So, see, the systolic blood pressure, it is mainly dependent on the stroke volume, okay, and compliance of the aorta. Now, stroke volume depends on preload, afterload, and contractility of the heart. If the preload increases, the stroke volume increases. If the afterload increases, the stroke volume decreases. And if the contractility of heart increases, the stroke volume increases. Okay. Now, the second factor is compliance of the aorta. If the compliance compliance is more, okay. If the compliance is less, then the systolic blood pressure will increase. And if the compliance is high, then the systolic blood pressure will decrease. Mm -hmm. Now, which are the factors that affect the diastolic blood pressure? First, the main main thing is blood volume in aorta during the diastole. Okay, so if there is less blood volume in aorta during the diastole, then that will decrease the diastolic blood pressure. And one of the classic example is aortic. regurgitation okay in this all the blood from aorta goes back into the left means most of the blood in aorta the, it goes back into the left ventricle during the diastole so that decreases diastolic blood pressure and another important component is uh, the vascular resistance peripheral vascular resistance if the peripheral vascular resistance increases the diastolic blood pressure increases now see this one is little confusing for everyone but it's easy See, whenever there is increase in heart rate, the diastolic blood pressure increases. And why is it so? See, whenever the heart rate increases, the filling of coronary artery decreases. Okay, so most of the blood, instead of going into the coronary coronary artery, remains in the aorta. And when it remains in the aorta, the diastolic blood pressure increases. And also the viscosity of the blood, when it increases, the diastolic blood pressure increases. So I think it's clear about systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure and the factors that affect them. So before starting the graph, first see this simplified thing. If you know the receptors, okay, if you know the receptors and their function, then the graphs become really, really very easy. So let's simplify what what are the function of the uh, receptors. See, alpha one will cause vasoconstriction, okay, so it will increase the peripheral resistance. Okay, and when the peripheral resistance increases, the diastolic blood pressure increases. Now, beta two will do vasodilation. Okay, and when the when it causes vasodilation, the peripheral vascular resistance will decrease, and the diastolic blood pressure will decrease. And beta one will increase the cardiac output, and hence it will try to increase the systolic blood pressure. Okay, but it mainly depends on the stroke volume rather than cardiac output. So, uh, so let's start. See. Uh, the first graph is about norepinephrine now if you know on which receptors norepine or norepinephrine is working and what are the function of receptor then this graph are really easy so first let's start start see uh, see first norepinephrine increases systolic blood pressure as well as diastolic blood pressure why does the systolic blood pressure increase see first because of the beta 1 activity okay beta 1 receptor they try to increase the contractility and the heart rate and the other one is alpha 1 activity see alpha 1 it causes veno constriction okay it also uh, causes constriction of arteriole but also causes veno constriction and when the vein constrict the venous return will increase okay so that means the uh, preload will increase and when the preload increases there is like it's likely that cardiac output output will increase so see norepinephrine by working on beta 1 and alpha 1 will increase the systolic blood pressure see this now why is diastolic blood pressure increase it's because of the alpha 1 activity which increases the total peripheral vascular resistance okay so when it increases the diastolic blood pressure increases now what about the heart rate see whenever whenever the blood pressure increases heart rate always decreases okay and whenever the blood pressure decreases heart rate al always increases because whenever the blood pressure increases the baroreceptor senses it 
okay and uh, through vagus uh, vagal output it will decrease the heart rate and whenever the blood pressure will decrease it will be opposite the heart rate heart rate will increase so see here the mean blood pressure which is shown in the black when it increases the heart rate decreases due to reflex bradycardia okay now the what about the total peripheral uh, resistance it increases because of the alpha 1 activity so see most of the time whenever the total peripheral resistance increases the diastolic blood pressure also increases in and most most of the condition both will correlate with each other okay so that was about norepinephrine yeah one more thing see the main confusing thing about norepinephrine is cardiac output most of the people think why does cardiac output remains normal so see a cardiac output can remain normal or it can increase slightly okay it can increase slightly and why does cardiac output remains normal see let's try to understand first thing is it works on the beta 1 receptor okay so it will increase the cardiac output okay but there is also reflex bradycardia later on okay reflex bradycardia so that will decrease the cardiac output so these both effect will try to balance out each other okay another thing is through alpha 1 activity it will cause venous constriction and it will increase the preload okay see through alpha 1 activity it will cause venous constriction and it will increase the preload and when the preload increases the cardiac output increases uh, okay and also when alpha when it acts on the alpha 1 it increases the after load okay because alpha 1 receptor are also present on the arterioles and when the alpha 1 receptor acts on the arterioles it will increase the after load and this will decrease the cardiac output so these two effect will balance each other okay so most of the time the cardiac output will remain normal or it will increase slightly okay and okay what's the uh, pulse pressure see pulse pressure is basically the difference between systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure and in this case the systolic blood pressure has increased too much but diastolic blood pressure has increased slightly so the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure this difference this has increased so that's why pulse pressure has increased now the second one is epinephrine now see epinephrine has mostly effect on the beta receptor and little effect on the alpha 1 receptor so first first let's see what are the what's the effect of epinephrine on the blood pressure see it increases the systolic blood pressure again through beta 1 activity and through alpha 1 activity which increases the preload okay now it decreases the diastolic blood pressure why because the main effect of epinephrine is on beta 2 receptor rather than alpha 1 receptor so see beta 2 will cause vasodilation okay what will alpha 1 do it will cause vasoconstriction so that's why the predominant effect will be vasodilation and when vasodilation occurs the total peripheral resistance decreases and the systolic blood pressure decreases see i already told you that the total peripheral resistance and diastolic blood pressure they go in hand to hand okay see whenever there is increase in total peripheral resistance the diastolic blood pressure increases and when whenever there is decrease in total peripheral resistance the diastolic blood pressure decreases now as uh, again see uh, the mean pressure has increased okay so whenever there is increase in pressure okay most of the time whenever there is increase in blood pressure the heart rate will decrease but but in this case the heart rate are increasing because epinephrine is working on the beta 1 receptor see so if any drug that increases the heart uh, sorry that increases the blood pressure but it has no beta 1 activity okay then the heart rate will decrease but if it has enough beta 1 activity to uh, overcome the reflex bradycardia then the heart rate heart, heart rate will not decrease so this is the reason why in epinephrine we see increase in the heart rate instead of the decrease which we should expect so that's the thing now total peripheral resistance decreases because of the beta 2 activity okay because the beta 2 activity is much more than the alpha 1 activity okay now one classic question that shows up on the exam is that what will be the effect on the blood pressure after giving alpha blockers okay alpha blockers sorry 
alpha blocker if we give alpha blockers then what will be the effect on blood pressure after epinephrine infusion and the answer will be the blood pressure will decrease why will it decrease see initially what happened that uh, the diastolic blood pressure was decreasing but it was it wasn't a very means it wasn't a too much decrease because the beta 2 activity okay was uh, like balanced was means the alpha 1 activity ca caused vasoconstriction and beta 2 caused vasodilation so that's why the decrease in the blood uh, br diastolic blood pressure wasn't too much okay but now as after means after giving the alpha blocker okay after giving the alpha blocker now the only receptor remaining for epinephrine to work are beta 2 receptor so now the diastolic blood pressure will decrease too much see this is after alpha blocker okay the one I, I am showing with pencil so it will be too much that's why the mean blood pressure will drop so this is a really a good question that after giving alpha blockers the, the epinephrine will show a decrease in the mean arterial blood pressure as well as too much decrease in the diastolic blood pressure so that was about norepinephrine and epinephrine if you will compare both of these then it will be really helpful to remember now let's move to isoproterenol See, isoproterenol works on beta 1 and beta 2 and very, very, very little activity on the alpha receptors. So, if, if you know this simple scheme, you can answer all the questions in the graph. See, the first one is, what will be the effect on systolic blood pressure? It will increase be because of beta 1 activity. What will be the effect on diastolic blood pressure? It will decrease because of beta 2 activity. It will, it will cause vasodilation and whenever there is vasodilation the total peripheral resistance decreases and the diastolic blood pressure decreases I already told you that total peripheral resistance and uh, diastolic blood pressure they go hand to hand so remember they, they always correlate with each other now why, why will there be an increase in heart rate see there are two reasons one is that the mean arterial blood pressure is decreasing okay so there will be reflex tachycardia okay reflex tachycardia and also there is beta 1 activity okay so both of them will increase heart rate okay so that's the reason of increase in the heart rate now the last thing is about phenylephrine see phenylephrine they work on mostly on the alpha receptors okay alpha 1 to be more specific alpha 1 see what will be the effect on systolic blood pressure uh, systolic blood pressure it will increase because alpha 1 will cause venoconstriction that will increase the preload okay sorry preload okay and that will try to increase the stroke volume and whenever the stroke volume increases the systolic blood pressure goes up okay Wh what about the diastolic blood pressure it will also increase because alpha 1 cause increases the total peripheral resistance by vasoconstriction okay mainly by constricting arterioles and whenever we have increase in the total peripheral resistance the diastolic blood pressure will increase now as we see an increase in the mean blood pressure okay the heart rate will decrease due to reflex bradycardia okay so see more the rise in the blood pressure more is the decrease in heart rate okay if there is too much increase in blood pressure we will see more decrease in the heart rate due to reflex activity of the baroreceptors now what will be the effect of phenylephrine on blood pressure after the alpha blockade see when we give alpha blockers okay then it will decrease the blood pressure but not too much there will be a little decrease in the blood pressure like suppose if here it's 140 then here it will be somewhere around let's say 120 okay or 110 maybe just for example so the blood pressure will decrease okay and the uh, decrease in heart rate was too much here okay like the magnitude of decrease in heart rate was too much while here there is only little decrease in the heart rate because the blood pressure hasn't increased too much okay so what's the main difference between epinephrine and phenylephrine see after giving alpha blockers the blood pressure instead of increasing it start decreasing after epinephrine infusion while in phenylephrine the blood pressure still remains increased okay it, it's increased but uh, it's little less increased than it was before so it, it was about phenylephrine and epinephrine so see if you know this this basic thing about alpha 1 beta 2 and beta 1 then I think you can solve most of the graphs even if they try to mix 
some drugs and everything it will still be easy if you remember this simplified scheme okay so that was about the graphs in the pharmacology